On the outskirts of a jungle lives a majestic creature, thought by some to be more fearsome than even lions. Sunlight catches in its long, fiery mane. The long, confident arch of its tail sways as it prowls the forest floor. With its dangerous claws, it fends off invading rivals and predators and grips the bark of trees as it ventures heavenward for respite at night. Shielded from the high noon sun, one particular sharp-eyed male searches the ground in the shade. There he finds what he's looking for, white palm fruit just fallen from one of the many trees that grows in an oil palm plantation in Malaysia. He calls over his female companions, plumage earthier and shorter for practical purposes, and allows them to pick from the palm fruit first. Otherwise known as Gallus gallus, the red jungle fowl and a few other jungle fowl are grouped in the family Phasianidae, alongside turkeys, pheasants, partridges, old world quail, and peafowl. Often found on the threshold of natural and human touch habitats, where the foliage is disturbed and better suited for ground nests, the red jungle fowl is native to Southeast Asian countries. It's in this part of the world around 7,000 to 8,000 years ago where we believe the jungle fowl was first domesticated. Through written and archaeological accounts and radiocarbon dating, we surmise that the chicken voyaged from Asia to the New World from many directions by different boats on separate occasions. One thing that is quite certain, however, is the chicken's global popularity. More than a source of protein, the chicken has been widely and highly regarded through our history. The Greeks and Romans, who found the chicken exotic in ancient times, came to associate the chicken with revered figures of mythos, like Heracles, Ares, and Athena. Roosters are referenced in the Talmud for fostering proper relations with hens. Among the Miao in China, the rooster is said to protect the shaman from evil spirits, since the evil spirits will only see the rooster's spirit, thus rendering the shaman invisible. One Old Norse verse in the Poetic Edda states that three roosters crying from within the realms of Jotnir, Asgard, and Helm, respectively, will signal the imminence of Ragnarok. In a vaguely similar flavor in the Bible, Jesus Christ foretells that his loyal follower Simon Peter will deny knowing Jesus three times before the crow of a rooster on the night of Jesus' arrest and trial by the high priests. In more recent times, chickens have gained prominence as a backyard pet as well. Not unlike the domestic dog, the chicken at the hand of humans has developed a vast variety of breeds within the species. Quirky, like the silky bantam with their extra toes and fluffy barbule-less feathers, and others are more quintessential, like the territorial Rhode Island Red with its brick red plumage and streamlined avian profile. They come as small as the affable Malaysian Sarama Bantam and as large as the gentle Jersey Giant. Despite the variety of traits between the individual chickens and the different breed standards, they all share the same basic behaviors. For instance, all chickens share the same cleaning rituals. They preen to adjust their feathers and distribute what's called a preen oil, keeping their feathers from drying out and becoming brittle. They also take dust paths, which in contrast keeps the preen oil from accumulating and suffocates any parasites that may be camping out on their feathers. As an added bonus, a thorough dust bath in the shade can keep chickens cool in the heat of summer. This sounds a lot like our other companion, the pig. From the same dirt, they frequently scratch and forage for just about anything they can fit in their beaks. A good, well-rounded chicken diet will contain grains, fruits, and vegetables, and small animals like insects, frogs, and even mice. Most chickens like to roost on perches built off the forest of a coop. Following the red jungle fowl's line of reasoning, roosting at night makes them feel safe from potential ground predators. The only breed that may not partake in roosting as readily is the silky bantam. They prefer to huddle together on the ground in a tight or loose bunch, depending on how cold or hot it is, and especially if perches aren't made easily accessible. There is an orderly system, a social hierarchy, that helps determine who gets to do anything first, second, third, etc. This hierarchy, called the pecking order, is gradually explored and established starting as early as adolescence. Roosters are almost always at the top. Hens earn higher social status by asserting themselves as dominant, while the most docile ones fall into the lower ranks. Even higher than the rooster or top hen in the flock are humans. Most people who own chickens as pets will tell you that their flocks show affection by following them around, taking an interest in what their owners do, and even happily cuddling up with a cat-like purr. People also claim that chickens can commit to memory over 100 faces, animal and human alike. 
While the dog often claims a spot as top animal in the cultural histories of humankind, the chicken has likewise been a central companion creature in society. Over this century's long acquaintance, we have come to better understand the personalities and distinct intelligences of these birds. Perhaps bird-brained, with its negative connotations, is not an accurate descriptor. What do you think? Find additional resources on chicken capabilities in the description.